Good afternoon from the Lebanon Senior Center. This is Rebecca. And uh, this month our cooking demos are going to be working on One Pot Wonders. We're heading into fall and you know the holidays start happening and we get really busy. So uh, it's our opportunity to try to do quick dinners that are comforting. You know the weather starts getting a little cooler out and you sometimes just want something hearty to stick to your ribs. And that's what today is. Today we're featuring the one pot, literally one pot wonder. And I'm going to make up a quick batch of chili. It might seem ho-hum. It might seem, you know, you're kind of an every man's dish and uh, something, you know, for sporting events or for the guys. But hey, there's a lot of nutrients you can pack into a good chili. Um, it's kind of like a soup. You can put all kinds of things in it that people don't normally think about it. So um, it's really wide open to dietary differences and needs as well. So keep that in mind when you are thinking of chilies this winter. You can certainly make it as nutritious or a guilty pleasure as you choose. And if you are thinking, Rebecca, beans don't agree with me, you know, a little dabble do ya, right? You don't have to go all in with lots of different kinds of beans, but beans are a great source of alternative protein and they're high in fiber. Um, so you know what? You might have to break out the beano. You might have to just deal with some gas. Just don't eat it when you're gonna be around people, all right? This might be your comfort food for you and that way you can customize it just the way you wanna eat it, okay? Um, so don't poo poo it until you, you try it for yourself. Um, and that's what we're going to do today. So as I make up this chili uh, for my household tonight, uh, I'm going to be talking about some things I'm going to do, some things that you might uh, want to try if you like them. Um, some people like heat. Some people don't like things overly spicy. Some people want to go vegetarian. Some people don't think something's dinner unless there's a meat product in it. Um, some people like to add and are looking for ways to add more vegetables. Other people say, hmm, vegetables, it's what my dinner actually eats before I eat it. Anyway, so I am including a meat in this chili tonight because my crew appreciates a, a little opportunity to have some meat in their day. So I have started with some ground beef. Let's see if I can get some light on it. And I have browned it up in my pot. Just real quick, browned it up. Turned the heat down a little bit when it was uh, done. I'm going to turn that heat back up so we can get this raring to go. You can add dice up onion if you've got onion left over for something and toss that in here. Um, normally I would, but uh, I uh, had red onion left and I don't know. I kind of prefer yellow onion and chili. So I'm skipping the onion, but going to add some fresh bell pepper. See, there we go. Getting those nutrients in there. So the fresh bell peppers going in. You can add lots of fresh things from your garden. Um, tomatoes, and again, I know that some folks are on medications they have to watch their acid intake, or just, you know, acids, again, the, you know, the acidic tomatoes and the beans might be something that your system's challenged with. I saw the coolest thing in the market the other day, low acid canned tomatoes. I don't know how they do it, but you know, you can get a, I know there's no salt added, so evidently there's now, yay science, a low acid tomato. That might be something worth checking out. Um, it is kind of hard to do a chili without some source of tomato, um, but you can bump that up for more nutrition or, you know, kind of dial it down if you need to. So our heat's up, pepper's in. You know, if you've got leftover squash, you can put that in. I saw a recipe for a uh, butternut squash chili. So they were adding butternut squash uh, into their chili. It sounded kind of good to me, honestly. Um, but a fun way to sneak those vegetables in. You know, and if you're concerned about texture of cooked vegetables, put them in the blender. Blend them up, toss them in there. People won't even know they're getting that extra nutrition. It'll just also help thicken up the sauce in a very natural way. Um, and maybe not have to use the tomato paste that we're going to add later because you're using something else to thicken the sauce. Um, again, so toss in whatever vegetables you feel good. I'm adding some chopped bell pepper, as I said, and some corn. Okay, corn's not the most nutritious thing on the planet, but it tastes good. And uh, I've got some 
some folks in my household that love the taste of corn. So whatever vegetables you've got going, just let them get a little saute on them in with your, as your ground meat finishes. Again, if you're not using meat, then you can skip to going straight to sauteing those vegetables. Or if you're using a protein substitute, you can certainly use that as well. So whatever your desire is. So looks quite festive in there right now. Um, now the other part, most people don't think of a chili without having beans. This is where I'm gonna go get mine. I'm using two kinds of beans in my chili. I like to mix it up. I like to add the extra color. And let's face it, I have a preference. I'm a big fan of the black bean. Love those things. But kidney beans seems traditional or a pinto bean. So I rated the pantry. So we're going red and black today, a kidney bean and a, a black bean in my chili. Again, I've done a white bean. I've done all kinds of different beans you can add in. Changes subtle flavors. Uh, and textural differences behind different beans. Don't be afraid to try it, uh, mix it up, try a slight variation in your next chili. So I did go ahead and open the can. Didn't want you guys to have to suffer through hearing the can opener. You can certainly soak your own beans if you would like to. Uh, I totally cheated and just used them out of a can. I've rinsed them really well. Try to make sure any grittiness it's gone because there's texture and then there's gritty stuff right all right so this is what we're starting to work with you can start seeing that the colors getting colorful the yellow from the corn and the bell pepper are really popping against the red of the kidney beans and the brown of the black beans and the ground meat. And so I'm just gonna let those hang out there. This is where I'm gonna start playing with my seasonings and talking about some options. So particularly for me, we're big garlic fans in my house. So gotta put a little bit of garlic in my chili. Put about a tablespoon of garlic in there. Yes, we like garlic. We use the big jar of minced garlic around here. And we've got, of course, some chili powder. So I'm going to back up just a brief moment. One of the things you can think about doing are these pre-mixed seasoning packets. They actually make one for chili too. Um, sometimes I cheat and I don't use the chili mix in my chili. I use the taco because with the taco one, see if I can get it to where you can read it here, with the lighting, maybe not, reduced sodium. So you can find this taco seasoning with a reduced sodium, but it's really hard to find the chili with reduced sodium. Um, and I like to control the salt levels of my food. Um, and there's a lot of the same ingredients in the taco seasoning as the chili seasoning. So sometimes I'll hijack taco seasoning packet, dump it in, and, uh, away she goes and I'll use that and then I'll just supplement it with some other uh, herbs and spices maybe add a little cumin etc that you're going to see over here in just a moment um, but I'm not going to use that package today I'm going to go full on from scratch mode over here of course it wouldn't be chili if you didn't use actual chili powder so I'm getting some chili powder loaded up in my measuring spoon and a teaspoon of chili powder in there that is cool measuring spoon lets me adjust one spoon different measurements haha i like me a good kitchen toy that i can uh, use really well so we've got our chili powder okay, i'm going to go ahead and sneak some onion powder in here to get that flavor So, got about a teaspoon of onion powder in there. If you all are fainting because I'm actually measuring things, you know, I'm trying to be a good role model. All right. Paprika. 
I'm also going to do about a teaspoon. You got smoked paprika. I recommend that. Adds a little smokiness to your chili. Let's see. We've got cumin. Again, I don't know. There's something to me about the smokiness with the chili. Somehow makes it campfire goodness. We do about half a teaspoon of cumin. All right, let's talk about some optional things. You can use the ground cayenne, the red cayenne pepper, if you want to. You can use whatever hot sauce or sriracha your family likes. Um, definitely feel free to incorporate some of that into your chili if your family in particular likes the, a bit of heat. Um, we're kind of mild and tame. You might disagree with me if you know me, but um, let's just say the rest of the household is mild and tame. They let me play with it, you know, on my own. But you know what? A little dab doesn't hurt. <laughs> All right. Oh, sorry. Got that on the lid. <laughs> Started to overshoot the bowl a little bit there. All right, and some of the other things I like to do, definitely some more Hispanic flavors. Of course, these can also be Asian, depending on how you use them. I'm going to just do a little sprig of dried cilantro. And I went back to that palm thing. Can't trust me. And about a teaspoon of oregano. Just to get some healthy natural fills in there. So again, you don't have to use a hot pepper, you don't have to use red pepper, you don't have to use a hot sauce. That's just your choice, uh, um, and as much or as little as you want. You can do it when you're cooking the chili, or you can certainly wait and let individuals add their own uh, via hot sauce um, when it's all cooked up. Alrighty. It's is one away okay so this is where I'm going to go ahead and add our tomato sauce so the tomato sauce is going to act as a thickener also give us some of that tomato feel there we go first I thought it wasn't going to want to come out of the can Aha! I won the battle so it's about a six ounce can of tomato sauce. I'm also going to add in about a cup of beef stock. It's low sodium beef stock again. I like to control that. You can just incorporate water. That is just fine to do that. I like to use the beef stock because I feel like it just adds a little more depth of flavor to the chili. And depending on the day, the humidity, whatever other forces of nature are working for you or against you, you may need to add a little more water or a little less water and also to whatever extra vegetables you've added in that can change um, the thickness of your chili at this point and you also might like it soupier than other people or you might like it thicker than other people so I encourage you to start with a little bit of liquid you can always add more but it's really hard to correct if you get it over watered down and it really will turn into a, a soup more than a, a chili all right so that's the basics of it. You can salt and pepper to taste and you're ready to go from here. But I am one that can never leave well enough alone and I kind of have to make it my own and add my own little flavor profiles that I enjoy. And I also like to use up things that are left over in my kitchen that maybe aren't being used. And I bought a new jar and I want the big jar in the fridge and the jar that's been sitting there a while needs to get something done with it so it's not sitting around. So I got this little jar of salsa left over. I don't even remember from what. I'm going to go ahead and pour that in there. Again, you get some tomato, onion, you know, peppers, all kinds of flavors mixed in there. 
a little oomph without having to dice up all of those extra vegetables on my own Aha. and uh, using something in my fridge before it goes bad alrighty and then because I added just a little bit of heat I like to balance it out with a little bit of sweetness I don't want to add sugar I don't want to add honey because that starts sounding weird with chili but I will do a little bit of barbecue sauce that's right so about two three tablespoons of barbecue sauce again it's just for me enriching the depths of flavor almost adding a little a little bit of hint of baked bean uh, flavoring experience into my chili there you go and that's really it super easy super fast to do just knocking those few ingredients together and this is a fun thing you can do um, it's a quick lunch on a cold afternoon or certainly something you can do if you've got a friend or two coming over maybe you're gonna watch a game or a movie together um, just a lot of fun and really tasty and of course one of the good things about chili is how you eat it and what you eat it with whether you are putting a dollop of sour cream on it or getting some grated cheddar cheese or a Mexican blend cheese or scooping it up with chips or crackers you know or heck even some crunchy tortilla chips mixed in there all tasty ways to enjoy your homemade chili on a chilly afternoon or curled up um, maybe on the sofa watching a good movie in the evening this fall so hopefully you've learned a little bit and thought about a couple of different ways maybe you could try out a different chili recipe this fall um, certainly feel free in your comments to share your favorite add-ins or leave outs in your uh, famous homemade chili of course and uh, we'd love to hear them and share but don't worry it's you know we're friends no one will uh, share your secrets here on social media but uh, yeah enjoy and you guys Stay healthy, stay well from the Lebanon Senior Center. Hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.